If you crack first, Dave, it won't make you any less of a man. I'm nowhere near cracking. Neither am I, my friend. Oh, Dave. My friend. Oh, Matthew, what is it now? For God's sake, no one's smoking, okay? But, but nothing! You know what we need around here is an anti-whining ordinance. So just sip your sniveling little lip and all your skinny ass out of Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time for some Marvel Comics news. So we knew at the end of August that we were going to be getting a lot of information about what Marvel Comics was going to do to celebrate their upcoming birthday. We know they got a lot of things in store for, for uh, Spider-Man, but they're going to be doing a lot of things with other characters as well. And we've got eight new Marvel's calling them tentpole titles. I'm more dubious about it than that. It's a lot of uh, the main line, you know, flagship kind of titles, you know, X-Men's involved. We've got uh, Fantastic Four, Avengers, stuff like that. We've got a couple of events in here. You know, looks like there's a couple of ongoings as well. They're definitely, once again, leaning heavily into um, older established names. In some cases, using the same name outright. In some cases, we are promising somewhat of a sequel to like Secret War, uh, stuff like that. I got all the big details. We're going to cover Devil's Reign, Avengers Forever, Timeless, X, uh, 10 Lives, 10 Deaths of Wolverine, She-Hulk, Fantastic Four, Reckoning War, and Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur. For most of these, we do have the creative artist uh, attached, not for Moon Girl, but at the other ones we do. We have the you know essentially the month they're going to come out, as well as a brief synopsis, synopsis of what's going to happen. And I will go over them all of them individually, give you my thoughts after I give the information. I definitely want to hear from you guys. Which one of these are you the most anticipated for? Which one are you hot for? Which one do you think is a waste of time? Which which one has the most potential? You know, definitely let me know what you guys think as well. Definitely like uh, having the conversation with y'all and uh, see what you guys think. So the first one we are going to get into is the Daredevil event, or we didn't know it was going to be an event, but apparently it is, that, that Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto were hitting at when they announced that Daredevil 36 was essentially the end of the run. It's going to be called Devil's Reign. It's coming out in December 2021. You may remember that name from a 1998-97 crossover event with Top Cow and Marvel in which Mephisto attempts to gather all the souls of the Top Cow universe so he can return uh, to the Marvel universe more powerful than ever. This isn't anything like that, but they are using the name. This is what they released on their MarvelComics.com as well as in their, their tweets about Devil's Reign starring... Well, well, we'll see. We'll get into the names here. It says, all hell breaks loose in the Marvel Universe as the Kingpin finally declares all-out war on the heroes in Devil's Reign. Having set the stage in their Eisner-dominated Daredevil epic, Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto, far-reaching crossover event finds Mayor Fisk outlawing all superheroes in New York and unleashing intel on all their dark secrets while pitting Daredevil, Electra, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and many more against his Thunderbolt agents. But in the end, who will reign? It sounds fine enough. I think Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto have been absolutely destroying it on their Daredevil series. I'm glad it's going to continue on in this. Am I super excited? It, it sounds fine. It sounds cool. You know, I like seeing Daredevil, Electra. Obviously, she's also Daredevil right now. Uh, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. And it says many more. I really wish they would highlight Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Although, is Danny Rand really Iron Fist anymore? It sounds like he gave it up in Heart of the Dragon. Uh, you know, also Jessica Jones, some of those other New York-based superheroes. I imagine they're going to have some, uh, some role to play in this. This has got to be the fallout from the wedding, right? We know that Mayor Fisk and... Uh, Typhoid Mary are, are getting married, or they're supposed to get married. It's, you know, whatever happens there, it's got to be leading into this, right? That's why you do a, a big wedding thing, so it cannot happen and lead into all hell breaking loose. Sounds perfectly fine. This, I'm absolutely a customer in December 2021. Sounds like a lot of fun. I thought perhaps when their their run was over that we would find out that either Mar Mardock was dead and it was going to be Electra Woman Without Fear or it was going to be Daredevils with Matt Murdock as, as a Daredevil and Electra as another Daredevil. It says who will reign at the end. I imagine by the end of this, either Matt Murdock or Electra will also be like the Daredevil moving forward. Don't be, don't be shocked if it's Electra, at least you know temporarily. Getting into the next title, we've got Avengers Forever. Now, if you are a big Avengers fan, you know, of, uh, 
in the last 20, 25 years, you probably recognize that name as one of the most badass miniseries that uh, that, that Com- or Marvel has produced, you know, in quite some time. Avengers Forever was a 12 issue uh, limited series from December 98 to November 99 from Kurt Busiek, Roger Stern with Carlos Pacheco and Je- Jesus Moreno. And essentially it was, you know, some of the best Avengers, the best versions of Avengers in a lot of cases, maybe uh, younger versions, older versions got together to save, I believe, the multiverse. Now they're playing on that a little bit. This is going to be Marvel Comics. Of, this is what Marvel had to say. Marvel Comics Avengers Forever pulls together archaeologist Tony Stark, a.k.a. the Invincible Ant-Man. So these are going to be different versions of our favorite heroes in in all the other multiverses where they're not like the same heroes that they are in the 616 and avengers from across the multiverse to bring order to timelines where hope is a four-letter word jason aaron and aaron cooter present an all-new series that will redefine the avengers as the multiverse's mightiest heroes this sounds a lot like scott snyder's uh, dark multiverse right we have all these different multiverses where hope is a four-letter word. Everything's very dark and bleak. And, you know, we've already had Dark Knight's Metal. We've already had Dark Knight's Death Metal. We also had, um, what was it? Was it um, we've had the Tales from the Dark Multiverse stuff, which feels like it's already dipped in this. So it sounds like Marvel is kind of replicating that, but throwing the Avengers Forever banner on top of it since it was a very well-liked and, you know, I'll say loved Mini series from back in the day. <clears throat> this is all I got to say. I, I'm perfectly fine with the with the premise. I think it worked out well in DC Comics for the most part. Absolutely despise a uh, Dark Knight's death metal, but the Tales of the Dark Multiverse stuff is actually pretty fun, you know. And uh, we we did see what was that Generation Shattered, some stuff like that, very similar to what we're seeing here. Just get Jason, Jason Aaron off of Avengers. If this is his very last story arc or what he's wanted to do, you know, his entire time on Avengers, and this is the end, fine. I'll take it just as long as he's gone. But get Jason Aven- Jason Aaron off Avengers. It's been putrid. It's been awful. Everybody. Well, not everybody. There's probably 10 people out there that enjoy his run on Avengers. Everyone else is waiting for this to end so we can actually get a good Avengers story. His Heroes Were Born wasn't awful, and this kind of sounds you know, similar to that alternate timeline kind of stuff. Perhaps it won't be awful, but it's not going to be good. Everybody is just waiting for Jason Aaron to send out the tweet saying, you know, I've done everything I wanted to do on, on Avengers. I've puked out the same you know, plot you know, from 15 other events you know, in, in succession. It's time for me to move on. Yes, it is time for me to, you to move on, Jason Aaron. And it's, um, yeah, I just hope this is the last hurrah and he just moves on. Because it's his Avengers has sucked. Not the worst premise in the world, but you know Jason Aaron on this. I like Aaron Cooter. If it is like a dark multiverse story that works out, he's a really good horror artist. As far as Marvel comic stators go, so just let it be the end, man. Now let's move on to Timeless, also coming out in December 2021. So we're gonna have uh, Devil's Reign. Avengers Forever and Timeless all coming out in December 20, 2021. I talked to Perch about this before. Uh, we talked about it on the channel that Marvel was really wanting to load up the end of this year and into the beginning of next year for Penguin Random House to have some really big sales and get them on board now that they're going to be the new uh, distributor for their for their floppies. And it feels like this is has a lot to do with that. Now, Timeless is coming out in December. It says the future of the Marvel universe is here and timeless is where it all begins. When a threatening new timeline emerges, Kang the Conqueror must fight his way through the coming year to protect the main 616 timeline. He's worked centuries to solidify as his own. Jed McKay, Kev Walker, Joe Bennett, Mark Bagley, and more provide a first look at what's coming to the Marvel universe in 2022 in a story that will prove the future is timeless. Well, at least it's not the next earth-shattering event that will change the entire complexion of the Marvel Universe. I'm glad they're not promising that anymore. The future is timeless. This appears to be a pretty decent-sized event. I love Joe Bennett. The stuff he did on Immortal Hulk was badass. Mark Bagley 
his his portfolio and his work on Spider-Man and other characters speaks for itself. Really like his stuff on uh, Venom as well. Kev Walker is perfectly fine. So they've got a lot of good talent on here. Jed McKay is a bit of a wild card. His Taskmaster is awful, but his Moon Knight is great. So this is probably something that I'll pro- I'll jump into. Uh, I'm not as familiar with King the Conqueror as a lot of other people. Obviously, uh, I have read him a little bit. We did see him coming into the MCU in Loki. We know he's going to be one of the big villains in the MCU moving forward. So I'm not surprised that they're prioritizing the character within the comic books. Right now, we do have King the Conqueror from Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig. I'm assuming this has nothing to do with Timeless. I don't think you'll have to read that to get into Timeless. I think Timeless will probably just open up on its own to be its own thing. And uh, it's obviously that they are prioritizing King the Conqueror. And then that's that's the bottom line because Marvel Comics said so. I'll, I'll read this one. Like I said, this this sounds perfectly fine. I like really like the artist. And we'll see where they take that one. Now, getting into 2022, we've also got some uh, four, four titles there. Actually, it's five because this next one is actually two titles. In the spirit of House of X, Powers of Ten, we're getting ten lives of Wolverine, ten deaths of Wolverine, like a dueling series, kind of like what they did with House of X, Powers of Ten, January, January 2022. And it says, House of X and Powers of Ten ushered in the first Krakoan age of the X-Men. Now, Marvel Comics, 10 Lives of Wolverine and 10 Deaths of Wolverine will test the best there is at what he does before any mutant can survive the second Krakoan age. The real question is, will any readers survive the first Krakoan age? My goodness, this thing has gotten so bland and boring. Ben Percy, Joshua Cassera, and Federico Federico Vicentini tell two interlocked tales about what happens to Wolverine when his past meets his future. This is probably 12 to 24 months too late. I understand them reusing the idea or the way that House of X powers of 10 had like dueling narratives that kind of tied together loosely. And at the end, they were certainly one series. And I thought it was really well done by Hickman. I've never seen Ben Percy execute anything at the level of Hickman as far as complexity and things of that nature. I don't know that he's the perfect person for this. Obviously, he is the Wolverine writer, but even his Wolverine series is losing a lot of steam. It's kind of been boring lately. Um, And the other problem is, you know, readers know Hickman's gone from the X-Men. I'm sure he gave him some pointers here and there, but is this going to be important? It feels like a gimmick at this point. If this had come out 12 months ago when it felt like or people still believe that Jonathan Hickman was firmly entrenched as the head of X, you know, this probably would have sounded a lot cooler. Will it be successful? Absolutely, it's going to be successful. It's a Wolverine, you know, 12 part miniseries. I think the 10 lives of Wolverine, 10 deaths of Wolverine is kind of a stupid name. We'll see how they tie it in. And, uh, you know, for a character that can't die, how can you see him, Ted? die 10 times i really like joshua joshua casera i thought his art on x-force was fantastic but you know um the kubert art and the the uh victor bogdanovich art in wolverine no offense to joshua casera absolutely blew that away federico uh vicentini is not on their level either so i think they probably joshua casar is a good artist this will look perfectly fine but I'll read it because I'm a Wolverine guy and this isn't, you know, X-23, you know, uh, fake Wolverine. This is real Wolverine as far as I can tell. If we open it up and it turns out, you know, fake Wolverine's in there and it's X-23 is one book and then then we'll, we might have another discussion. But at this point, I'll read it. But it's hard to get excited knowing that Hickman's out of there. They're just reusing what you know his gimmick that you know he used for for house of x powers of 10 and i i just don't see percy constructing a story a narrative that works the way hickman's did i would love to be proven wrong and i will be there as a reader to see if it happens so this one's got some potential moving on to something that probably doesn't have much potential we got she hulk also coming out in january 2022 marvel comics she hulk from rainbow rowell and roge antonio 
throws the book at Jennifer Walters as she tries to put her rage-filled days behind her and return to practicing law in the defense of the innocent. But when her friend from her past comes knocking with a mystery she can't resist, she Hulk gets back to bashing. First of all, thank you for not including Jason Aaron on this thing. His version of She-Hulk is absolutely atrocious. The amount of damage that he's actually done to Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk uh, recently with the Marvel Comics universe, it's just astounding. And this World War She-Hulk, uh, you know, Red Room She-Hulk thing is just an abomination. And Abomination is a cool villain, but uh, you know, this Abomination version of She-Hulk is absolutely uh, putrid. It's, it's terrible. We do know that She-Hulk is coming up into the MCU with her own, I believe, standalone series on Disney+. And they're not going to do Red Room She-Hulk. They're not going to do Jason Aaron, uh, you know, Bruce Banner Hulk, but with long hair. It's going to be the, the Jennifer Walters everyone likes. It feels like this is returning the character back to the version that everyone likes. But the problem is, who gives a shit about Rainbow Rowell? She's been doing Runaways for like three years. It just, you know, it's getting canceled. No one cares. No one bought that book. Rainbow Rowell probably is a pretty big name in the YA graphic. Well, not even graphic novel. I think she's just a YA author. She's probably a big name there. But in Marvel Comics, she's absolutely nobody. No one bought read her comics. No one cared that it was canceled. And when they see her name attached to She-Hulk, like, who cares? Why not just give this to Dan Slott and let somebody, well, we'll get to the Dan Slott book. But this is the one Dan Slott should be writing because he's the last person that had a good She-Hulk run. Unfortunately, they if they cared about the character, they wouldn't give it to Rainbow real well because they know she's not going to sell anything. And, that, and that's unfortunate. And for all the Rainbow Ruel fans out there that are going, Wes, you son of a bitch. I'm sorry. I'm just calling it like I see it. <laughs> I hope she proves me wrong. I have nothing personally against the person. I've seen her, uh, you know, I've listened to a few interviews. I've seen her communicate on social media. It seems like a perfectly nice person, a good representative as a professional of herself in Marvel Comics. But her writing's just not there. No one cares. That's the problem. It's not actually her. Next up, we have Fantastic Four Reckoning War. This is probably the one I have the biggest problem with, even more so than the um, than the Avengers Forever. And this is coming out in January 2022. Dan Slott is joined by Carlos Pacheco and Rachel Stott for Marvel Comics Fantastic Four Reckoning War, an epic saga over 15 years in the making. The original secret war of the Marvel Universe has been reignited and every living being in reality is in danger, and we are finally at our day of reckoning. Obviously, they are referencing Secret War from 2004 to 2005, uh, which is the five-issue miniseries by Brian Michael Bendis. This is when Brian Michael Bendis was, was still thought of as in very high regard. You know, this isn't Civil War II. So it's certainly something that you can build on. Like I said, they're, they're using a lot of nostalgia, you certainly have Secret Wars, you know, back in the day, the one of the first really, really successful crossover kind of uh, big event books. You've also got recently Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars as well. Jonathan Hickman worked with Brian Michael Bendis on a lot of projects. And a lot of times when he would come in, he would elevate whatever Bendis had done and make it better. Why not? Why is this Dan Slott's baby? This should be a this has got Hickman's name written all over. Not only did he do Secret Wars, which, you know, is not exactly completely tied to this, but he's worked with Bennis in the past. He's taken Bennis's storylines, picked them up, and moved them forward in really exciting ways and done a lot with them. Dan Slott, he's just, he's a hes a bumbling moron nowadays. He cannot write. He, he, he had another event that was decades in the making, Iron Man 2020. It was unreadable. Think about Empire. Last time he got to work with a, a pretty big name writer in Al Ewing, when they did that Fantastic Four Avengers crossover, it was terrible. And I'll, I would imagine most of that's because of, of Dan Slott himself. Why is Slott associated with this? If you wanted to be successful, it would be anybody but him. This should be a Jonathan Hickman. Like if you put Jonathan Hickman Fantastic Four Reckoning War, this thing would pop at least 250 on the first issue and would maintain 
as long as it's six issues or less, at least 100,000 all the way through the series. Because people remember what he did on Fantastic Four. It's really the last Fantastic Four that run that's really liked. I mean, Dan Slott's tanked the Fantastic Four to like 30,000 or under right now, which isn't a good number for a team book like that. Um, just it's the wrong it's the wrong person following the wrong uh, the right story. This this is perfectly fine to come out now. It's like why is Dan Slott associated with it? We all know Christoph Gage is going to be doing most of the work anyway. Uh, the last book is one um, I think it probably will do just fine coming out in February 2022. This is the Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur book. Um, never had a lot of great sales, just as far as a floppy, but the trades on these have always done really well because they are marketed, you know, essentially toward an audience that tends to read their comic books in trade format. You know, that kind of scholastic, scholastic audience with that age demographic. Smart to bring this character back. I believe I've heard a lot of rumors that she will be in the MCU as far as the Disney Plus series somewhat, somewhat soon. I think that's probably pretty smart. This is what Marvel Comics had to say. Lunella uh, Lafayette and her lovable 20-foot dinosaur are back. In Marvel Comics, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. But what shape will their partnership take in this exciting new era? Keep your eyes peeled in the coming months for more news about the next adventure of the biggest brain in the world that will send dino-sized shockwaves to the Marvel Universe. In 2022, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur will bring new meaning to the term Marvel team-up in a tale that promises to shake your world. Whatever. That'll be perfectly fine. Um, <clears throat> this is something I would consider reading with my son. You know, depending on how well it's written, it says that the creative team is classified. That means they probably just don't have one yet. It's not like they're going to put Jonathan Hickman on Di Devil Dinosaur. They're not going to put Donny Cates on Devil Dinosaur. They're not bringing Scott Snyder over as the big reveal to be the Devil Dinosaur creator. I imagine they just don't have one yet because that uh, series is a little bit further out. So that's it. We've got Devil's Reign, Avengers Forever, Timeless. Ten Lives of Wolverine, Ten Deaths of Wolverine, She-Hulk, Fantastic Four, Reckoning War, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, all coming out in between December 2021, well, at least starting in February 2022. Devil's Reign, absolutely. Avengers Forever, I'll check it out, but Jason Aaron's time on Avengers needs to end. It's been time for quite, quite a while. Timeless sounds perfectly fine. You know, Jed, McKay, Jed McKay's doing a really good job on... Um, on Moon Knight has definitely turned my opinion of him. Ten Lives and Deaths of Wolverine is at least a year, perhaps two years too late. I don't think Percy is going to be able to execute this at a uh, Hickman's level, and it feels like they're stealing his gimmick anyway. We shall see what happens there. She-Hulk. We need to get back to the original She-Hulk. Rainbow Rule is probably not the, uh, the writer to do it if they want any type of uh, you know eyes on the product into, into to have people read it. Fantastic Four Wrecking War. Just get Dan. Why is Dan Slot still writing Fantastic Four? Anybody but Slot. And then Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur. Uh, pretty smart to bring that one back, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. That is the news from Marvel Comics. We've been waiting for this day for about three weeks, I believe, is when they announced that this was going to be an important day during the Marco Cicchetto, Chip Zdarsky, Daredevil runs ending. Uh, news release. We knew this was coming out. Lots of big things popping for the celebration of Marvel's uh, upcoming uh, birthday. And that's what we got. Let me know which ones you're excited for, which ones um, which ones you're apprehensive about. And hey, if I was wrong, if I was being West, you big meanie, you can't say that about Rainbow Well, she moves a needle or Dan Slot's Fantastic Four is the bomb. Let me know that. I, I don't mean I don't mind being told I'm wrong. I, I do like to have the conversation. 